my greetings to all in the previous lectures we were discussing the central nervous uh, sorry uh, the nervous system in humans wherein we discussed about uh, the structure of a neuron or a nerve cell then we talked about the different types of neurons present in the human body and also the types of neurons on the basis of their origin that is cranial and spinal nerves in this lecture we are going to continue with what was left that is the nervous system in human beings nervous system in human beings can be divided or categorized into three main parts and they are cns pns and ans cns stands for central nervous system pns stands for peripheral nervous system and ans stands for autonomic nervous system in today's lecture we are only going to talk about the cns that is central nervous system central nervous system consists of brain and the spinal cord it is the ultimate control center of the body the cns central nervous system which consists of brain and the spinal cord is the ultimate control center of the body i mean the different uh, kinds of body movements the different kinds of movements activities we are doing are happening in a controlled uh, coordination and integration which is achieved by the cns central nervous system the feeling of touch of sight vision hearing sensations to the cold and heat everything is regulated uh, by the uh, cns that is central nervous system the central nervous system consists of two parts the brain and the spinal cord the brain is the actual control center of the body okay the human brain weighs about 0. weighs about 1200 to 4 or 1200 to 1400 grams the human brain weighs about 1200 to 1400 grams which is roughly about 2% of our body weight so you can calculate if you are weighing 100 kg if some guy is weighing 100 kg so the approximate weight of his brain is going to be 2 grams because as i said brain weighs about 2% of our body weight anyway the brain is protected by three coverings which we call as meninges what are meninges the brain is protected by three coverings or three layers and we call them as meninges and there is a space between these three meninges which is filled with a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid the fluid is called as cerebrospinal fluid which is filled between the meninges of the brain what is the function of the cerebrospinal fluid this fluid protects your brain from shock and injuries right it protects your brain from shock and injuries and also it provides the nourishment to your brain so cerebrospinal fluid has two important functions now first is it protects your brain from shock and injuries and second is it provides the nourishment to your brain okay now the brain can be broadly divided into three uh, regions or three parts now first is the cerebrum number second is the cerebellum and number third is the medulla or the medulla oblongata the cerebrum is the top most part of the brain is the top most part of the brain and the cerebrum actually can be divided into two hemispheres okay the cerebrum can be actually divided into two hemispheres and we call them as left cerebral hemisphere and right cerebral hemisphere you will also find that there are certain ridges and grooves and furrows you find in the case of the uh, cerebrum and why do we have ridges and grooves suppose this is my hand okay so these uh, top they are the ridges and these deep valleys are the grooves so you find similar structures present uh, uh, on the cerebrum that you find ridges and grooves and what is the purpose of having ridges and grooves on the cerebrum the purpose of having ridges and grooves on the cerebrum is that it can accommodate more neurons by increasing the surface area understand suppose this is a flat surface it has it will be having lesser surface area than the same palm which has ridges and grooves like this of the same surface for example take the example of this blackboard 
if you calculate the surface area of the of the blackboard say it comes about uh, say um, say 50 uh, meters square for example 50 meters square but if you uh, put ridges on this like this that is going to increase the surface area of the blackboard similarly there is appearance of ridges and grooves on the cerebrum part and the purpose of the ridges and grooves is to increase the surface area and why do we need the we why do we need to increase the surface area we need to increase the surface area sorry the cerebrum needs to increase the surface area to accommodate more and more neurons to accommodate more and more neurons or nerve cells so that's why there's a appearance of ridges and grooves on the cerebrum so cerebrum is divided into two parts right left cerebral hemisphere and right hemis uh, cerebral hemisphere okay and then just under the cerebrum we see a small egg like structure this is a small egg like structure and we call this as cerebellum and we call this as cerebellum and also there is a stem uh, is a stem like structure or at the base of the brain you find a stem like structure and we call that as medulla oblongata medulla oblongata we call that as or simply we can call it as medulla now this is the basic structure of the brain wherein i showed you that there are three coverings of the brain which we call as meninges and the space between the meninges is filled with a fluid called the cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid protects the brain from shock and injuries it also provides nourishment to the brain okay and then there are the three different parts that is cerebrum cerebellum and medulla oblongata cerebrum can be divided into two hemispheres left and right cerebral hemispheres okay and there's an appearance of ridges and grooves in the cerebrum similarly you find uh, the appearance of Uh, there is not an appearance of ridges or grooves on cerebellum there is not an appearance of ridges and grooves on cerebellum but you will find the furrows here in case of the cerebellum and then we know is the medulla oblongata is a third part of the brain which is present at the base of the brain understand now let's talk about the different functions of the these three different parts of the brain that is cerebrum cerebellum and medulla oblongata cerebrum is known as the seat of intelligence it means it is going to regulate our thinking process our reasoning process okay and then there is cerebellum it controls the voluntary actions of the body and medulla oblongata it controls the involuntary actions of the body so let's talk about this in detail cerebrum is the seat of intelligence it perceives the uh, it perceives the sight the sensations it it uh, it is uh, the regulating your reasoning ability your thinking ability your thought process your memories they all are covered by the cerebrum part then there is cerebellum it controls the voluntary actions of your body and what are voluntary actions of my body like i am swinging my arm i am walking i am talking so this is happening in a controlled and coordinated fashion which is brought about by which part of the brain that is cerebellum cerebellum is controlling the uh wall interactions of the body <clears throat> then there is medulla oblongata medulla oblongata is the extension of the brain till the second lumbar vertebrae sorry that is a spinal cord uh, i mean the med it's a medulla oblongata which elongates and forms the spinal cord what's the function of the medulla oblongata the medulla oblongata controls the involuntary actions of our body and what are the involuntary actions involuntary actions like <clears throat> for example breathing is an involuntary action yes we can control our breathing suppose we can hold our breath we can hold our breath to uh, say up to 2 minutes 3 minutes or 5 minutes maximum but there after comes a point where we cannot control it okay and the uh, and we are where we cannot control it because the breathing is actually an involuntary function which is controlled by which part of the brain medulla oblongata similarly the other involuntary functions of our uh, body include for example the palpitations of our heart the beating of our heart uh, the bowel movement the functioning of our internal organs like we do not dictate our internal organs like kidneys and the liver that you have to do this you have to do that no we do not do that they function or they work on their own and what is the control center of these involuntary actions the control center of these involuntary actions is the medulla oblongata 
So this is all about today's lecture, where we, we discussed about uh, that the nervous system is divided into three parts, CNS, PNS, and ANS. And after we discussed the structure of the brain, its different parts and there is different, uh, is, is different parts and their functions. So thank you for watching me.